Hey guys, I know it's been a while since we posted any videos and there's plenty of good reasons for that. Um, I don't want to go into it right now, um, but I guess this will may, might just be a one-off until we start working on some things again, which is definitely happening. We, uh, we haven't split up as like development partners or anything. We just haven't had much time to post any videos and I'm sorry for that, but we have one now. So, what we're going to do today is create this herringbone pattern inside of Substance Designer. That's what this pattern is right here. It's pretty common in homes um, for a floor tile pattern, uh, generally made of wood, though there are herringbone pr brick patterns, and uh, the basis of what I'm going to show you will apply today. So, I, I know herringbone gives people trouble, um, and it gave me trouble, but... Uh, it's pretty simple when you get down into it, so I'll show you exactly how to make it uh, over from scratch, like right over here. So the first node you're going to need is the brick generator, and it'll look just like this when you pull it up. The basis of herringbone re relies on a ratio for these bricks on, on X to Y, and Y has to be greater than X for this to work um, well and it has to be at a specific ratio. Um, the one that we're going to make are the long floor tile patterns. So this ratio will be uh, four bricks in X and 16 in Y, and that'll give you um, uh, like a fourth if you uh, reduce down. Um, and that needs to be consistent with a few of the parameters we're gonna set in here. The first thing we're gonna do is get rid of this awful beveling because it's terrible. So the next thing we have to do, uh, you can ignore this because we're not going to be using it. You're going to have the gap perimeter, and you're going to need to keep that uh, the math consistent with the the bricks. So for the gap, you're going to have 0.02 in x and 0 0.08 in the y. And what this will do is make the gap between the ends and the sides of the the bricks even. Um, and you have to have this for the mask that we're going to cr the two masks that we're going to create in just a minute because what will happen if they're if this ratio is not kept is they will start not being even so you need to make sure that you have this all lined up so we only have one more thing to do right now it's starting to look pretty good but herringbone relies on a staggered brick pattern so this last thing is the offset, which will give us our stagger. So you need to keep it at a fourth or a quarter. So put in 0.25 for the offset. And this is the basis of the entire herringbone pattern right here. The next thing you're gonna do is pull out a tile generator. And what we're gonna do here is create a mask for the stagger that goes down um, the bricks. So right here you have number X and number Y. So put in four and 16 again. Um, ignore everything else here and put in 0.25 for the offset, which again gives you the stagger, which is extremely exaggerated right here um, due to the bevel. The next thing you're gonna do is go down to pattern type, select square and everything will turn white and look weird. Um, and we'll fix that right now. The vertical mask, set that to true, and you'll see that we have our mask for the bricks. The next thing we do is control paste a copy of this tile generator, which will make it have all the same settings. Go down to the very bottom uh, to reverse rendering order and select that to true. The next thing is we can pull out a transformation 2D here, plug the original brick generator into it, and um, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So now we have the stagger going up in a vertical position. Pull out another transformation 2D. And what we're gonna do now is mirror this across. So this will give us a mask to use for the transformation that we use to the rig generator. So what we do now is take out a blend and we're going to plug this into the opacity and we're going to plug that into the foreground. So now our bricks you see here are being applied to our mask. 
The next thing you do is take another transformation 2D, mirror it again um, horizontally, and we're almost done. This is the last step. Pull out another blend node, plug the uh, last node we used into the background, the original brick generator into the foreground, and the second mask or the first mask we created into the opacity, and you have your perfect herringbone pattern. So it is pretty simple. The math generally gets people mixed up and they can't figure out how to make the interweaving patterns, but it is pretty simple. You just have to make sure your values are consistent across the board with each other and everything will come out just fine. And some of you might wonder why I used a brick generator instead of a tile generator to create the original pattern. And it's because of the amount of options that you have. You have your bevels and whatnot that you can use, um, the height, which is a, a luminance, basically. Um, but I like that it has min and max and a balance and slope. Um, and I really like that it has this because you can set all these and you can obviously see it's adding a, a gradient to most of them. But this variation will rotate them in different manners and that's really good if you want to make a color map. The only problem with this is, is say you have this here now, your, uh, I guess, a height map, and you went to go make a normal out of it. There is an issue that I found. And I don't know why this occurs. It might just be my machine. I, I'm not quite sure. But if you zoom in, you can start seeing these micro patterns. And they're extremely noticeable. They might just seem like this because we're at 358% right now. But if you apply this normal map here you can see what it's doing you can you can see it quite clearly um, so what we can do to get rid of this is not make the normals out of this height map so what you'll do is take a histogram scan and put the position all the way back up to one and you'll just have a uh, just a solid white and black map and your normal will be completely fine there's no more issue so yeah, that's it. That's how you make a herringbone pattern in Substance Designer. It's pretty easy, but I haven't seen any videos or anything over how to make this very easily. So I figured I would do the uh, fans of Algorithmic and their programs a favor. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. We might try to do more tutorials in the future. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time.